Hello and welcome to the T4 Show. My name is Michael Manna and we are back to doing fitness tutorial videos. It's been quite a while. We started doing the fitness Q&A last Friday, but now I figured since we have an empty gym all to ourselves, besides the owner Tim who's over there, but he, he's a good guy, he can stay. Uh, we will do a fitness tutorial. And the number one tutorial that I've been asked to do, and it really isn't gonna be all covered in this one video, is core training. I've been asked by a lot of people, what is your core? How do I engage my core? What is core training? Is it hard? Will it hurt my knees? I mean, the, the, the questions are limitless, and I've asked them myself before I actually really did realize the benefits of core training, which is essentially, once you learn how to do it, it's actually an easier way of training. Is that right, Tim? Most definitely. Okay, Tim's over there reading the paper. Yeah, hopefully he's doing the peak eight, work, peak eight workout, which we're gonna cover in another video. Very good way to train with interval training. So basically, we have a very uh, vast selection of tools that I use because quite frankly, I don't wanna get bored. We have everything from an agility ladder, which is really good for different ways to balance yourself, to get coordination, which I don't seem to have yet, and also, engages your core so we use that we even use this pull-up bar right here which i'm going to show you in this video how you can do abs but i know i don't use the word abs i use core because i really want it to be something that you don't treat at the end of your workout something you do throughout your workout is your core when you think of abs you just get i'm going to do some sit-ups leg raises at the end and that's it get the word abs out of your mind use core and you'll train during your workout and engage your core in all sorts of exercises. Also, we're gonna do some resistance training uh, and show you with curls, presses, and uh, exercises like that, how you can, I'm actually standing like that off camera, you can't see it, but I use a certain stance to engage my core, which I'm gonna show you in this video. Also, we use kettlebells, which I don't know if I wanna lift a kettlebell right now. Also, the medicine balls, which are over there. There's a ton of different stuff that we use to engage our core. We can even engage our core just by standing like I am right now in the stance. So, but we're gonna show you some exercises and also, more importantly, you can actually get down on a gym mat. You can lay down here safely, you don't do it on the concrete or anything, but lay on a gym mat and there's certain core exercises which are also abdominal exercises that you can do and I'm gonna show you how to do those in this video. So, um, I have to take my shirt off, don't I, to do this? Sure. Uh, God, against my better judgment. Oh well, uh, we will be right back when I get up the guts and hopefully I'll try to uh, get pumped up so I actually look like I have some abs too. So we'll be right back. No pun intended there? Why, the guts? Yeah, exactly. Okay, one of the, uh, one of the biggest uh, things that people seem to do wrong when they work their core or for abs in that matter is uh, when they do supposed sit-ups or crunches. And a lot of people use momentum to do these sit-ups and crunches. So I'm gonna show you a way that's actually easier, but harder at the same time to do that exercise. So basically what I do is to take the pressure away from my neck, cause I don't wanna be tucking up and down like this. So basically what I do is I put my feet flat on the mat right here. And so I'm not doing this big setup right here and putting pressure on my neck, especially if I'm doing that and I'm probably hitting my mic on that. But what I do is I want to look straight up at the ceiling here or look a little behind me so my chin doesn't tuck. And I want to take these hands and not put them behind my head and lace them like a lot of people do. But what I want to do is put them straight up into the air towards the ceiling. And what happens here is I can look straight through between my hands and follow that guide to where there's almost a string coming up from my chest to the ceiling. And my shoulders do not roll forward where you try to sit up like this. Your shoulders, if you see it on camera, will just go straight up in the air. And you hold and come back down. Come up and you can hold and come back down. Now what this basically does is it's an isometric movement. It's a lot like yoga where you're holding uncomfortable positions for a certain amount of time. So come up like this and hold and it's straight up and come back down. And if I feel like my chin is tucking, I look back. Same thing with the hands. They start to tuck a little bit. I go like that and I'm just basically in that straight line 
breaking this part of my abs and everything is locked in place. So if you want to mix it up a little bit too, besides being flat like this, you can also turn your legs like this, do the same thing and hit your oblique here along with your abs. So they'll break this and hold and back down and can't do more than one. <laughs> and the other way, get a nice stretch up like this same thing takes all the pressure off your neck my lower back feels fine and also engaging my core not just working abs with momentum there's no momentum in abs it's all isometric it's all controlled it's all holding positions it doesn't have to be fast and i don't even count my reps i do them all to failure so that's one thing so another thing what you can do here is there's variations where you would do you know people do their leg raises where they're holding on to the thing and they're just doing this on a certain machine what i do is everything here on the mat so basically what i would do there's variations of having your hands down like this and being in this position for certain things or if your back really hurts take your hands like this sorry ddp take your hands like this and i'll lay back and you connect your thumbs underneath your bud right there and that relieves a lot of pressure off your lower back so right there i'm gonna check my mic again that's where i'm at yeah i'm good sorry i'm not used to wearing a mic for a while so basically if i were to do it the hard way not the easy way which is also a safe way i would come up and I can do a bunch of different core exercises that can hit right down here at the lower part where we all have that pouch. So what I would do is, and I can turn around like this and show you too, I can do anything from bicycles frontwards, bicycles backwards. These are two separate exercises you can do for a very long time and very slow speed or ins and out one at a time just like this and hold for a second or two hold for a second or two same thing with both of them bringing them in like this bringing them out and I'll show you those from the side so right here bicycle in the front and don't try to tuck your chin in I would look up like this if I feel pressure in my neck and back like that same thing with one and two one two for some reason they say this is harder but I have less trouble doing this here and more trouble doing both of them at the same time and out and hold also if you want to really put an isometric hold on it with this you can just do six inches up from the ground and hold just hold it until you can't hold it anymore and basically what I'm doing is I'm squeezing my thighs together and I can feel it right here and this is a, just a way to keep myself balanced I could be back here if my back is really sore I'd like to be all the way up here so I can really feel it and I'm starting to sweat already just doing that so that is for that right there like I said the variations are obviously up here you can adjust back a little bit or connect like this go underneath your butt connect your thumbs and that relieves a lot of pressure off my lower back if it's sore so we got that one down and like I said you can train these things basically to failure to comfortable failure not to where you're hurting yourself but to where you can't do them you can do timed intervals you can do 30 seconds for each 40 seconds for each with a five second rest 10 second rest you can do Tabata style or uh, methods with this using the Tabata timer app on your iPhone or your Android it's it's really just up to you how much you can do in a safe easy and fun manner so the other one too is you want to do twists so there's a lot of variations a lot of people start out with their heels down knees bent feet their legs together like this and lace their hands boom 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 in a steady way i follow my my hands with my eyes that way i'm not just doing this and tweaking my neck so just like this this now the harder way is to go like this and do this 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 now if you want to really get difficult I'll take a little rest here come up fold your arms like Taz does and go like that hold hold 
oh, that's engaging everything right there. Mm, excuse me. So, and like I said, once again, apply those Tabata style rules, those interval style rules to your core exercise. I was gonna say abs, I'm doing it myself, but basically I like to use the word core so that way I don't leave anything out. And I, when I think of core, it's a safe way of doing stuff. It's balanced, it's not just throwing sit-ups and push uh, sit-ups and leg raises and all sorts of other stuff in a quick ab manner the way you do it at the end. So um, that's about it for the mat. You can do anything. I mean, you can even, there's another one too. <laughs> Excuse me. It's called a banana. It's for the, a lot of these from P90X and stuff. I got them, but they were around before even that. A banana is basically. Remember we had the leg lift where we did six inches here. So we do that, and then we do this, and we hold it in sort of a banana, just like that. And it won't take long if you do that at the end. I did I did these this morning at the end of my entire core workout in between my resistance training and it. Whew, it made me pretty damn sore. So that's it for that uh, as far as being on the mat. You can do this at home. This is a total home workout. You can do all these exercises. Like I said, if you do want to do sets, if you want to do rounds, if you want to do timed intervals, it's up to you. Just uh, really be safe and we are, especially with your back and neck when you're doing this type of core training. So uh, we're going to go over the pull-up bar there and I'm going to show you a couple things if I can get it on camera that you would do with the pull-up bar that's a little bit higher difficulty. So let's go over to there. Okay, here we are at the pull-up bar and this is much more advanced than what you would do over on the mat. Now the exercises are the same. The same leg movements with the bicycle forward, the bicycle back, and even the in and out like that but the problem is but it's not necessarily a problem but you know it's a little more difficult not only do you have to do that you also have to hold on so you really strengthen your grip you also get a nice stretch in my opinion of your core and your back but this is something where you can do these style of exercises you might not see it completely on the camera I'm going to try to get my feet up but I would hang like this and then I would kick out and I'm really working i'm not doing this where it's underneath me i'm literally bicycling ahead of myself and then the opposite and that's very hard at this point <laughs> same thing if you want to go up and down you would just go up one at a time you can do both at the same time if you want up and down like this now or both at the same time and come all the way down now this is a little short so i have to kind of roll my feet back when i do it now the more difficult one this is something I'm not looking forward to is the up and overs which work your obliques and your abs and you've probably seen a lot of people do these in training montages uh, you basically go over here you see how I'm sideways you come across go like that and control it and this is really playing on my core and my microphone cord which I just caught <laughs> and up and over that's a very very advanced don't recommend you do that uh, at first. I recommend oh, you stay on the mat. I recommend I stay on the mat too right now. I'm tired. But those are a couple things that you can do. Also, if you do pull ups, you can obviously engage your core with that by sticking your legs out, sticking your knees up as you pull up. But those are compound movements that you don't want to do as a beginner. You just basically want to stay in the basics. So uh, we're actually going to go to the agility ladder and we're try to do it with this if I can. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so we're gonna do right now biceps, triceps, and also shoulders. We're gonna do it standing because I wanna engage my core. And it's a little advanced if you wanna sit down and do it, but essentially almost the same stance. But I'm gonna do 
Uh, let's do biceps first because it seems like when people stand, and this is something I'm going to show, when people stand, they always seem to stand in a way that's actually working out too hard and not getting their balance and not getting uh, the true amount of strength they can with resistance training. So basically I'll drag, I'm just gonna grab 15 since I already worked out today. Now we already did a biceps and triceps video before, uh, which I encourage you to look at T4 Show videos and look at the Snap Fitness fan page uh, for Fishhawk Florida and they will be up there. So basically we already went through the thing about biceps and triceps training where when you hold it you want your elbows in you don't want any space when you're looking in the mirror if you can see that you don't want any space out here you want your elbows at your side and you want to come up like that you want to naturally flex your bicep you don't want to throw your elbows forward like this or you'll end up with an elbow like that <laughs> uh, but the more important part and this is something I'm going to show as we cut away the more important part is the way you stand now the way I'm standing is a staggered stance and this enables you to have a ton of balance and actually more strength for resistance training and also it engages your core and as you can see here um, my shoulders are back I'm able to engage my core and I'm actually able to lift really good form here it's a lightweight, but I feel it because I'm engaging my core and I'm actually getting the most out of the motion up where I'm flexing. And also when I come down, I don't do these halvesy things with the biceps. I come all the way down, let it hang, let my biceps stretch, come up and squeeze, and it just naturally will not go any further when I flex. So, and then I just bring it down there. And like I said, it's very important with my feet staggered like this that I'm engaging my core and also have balance and I won't fall over and it's safe. That's the number one thing, it has to be safe. So uh, let's go to triceps next and my feet will be in that same exact position no matter what I do when I stand. So we'll go to triceps now. Okay, now we're gonna do triceps and what we're gonna do is overhead tricep movement like that. Uh, I've got a little bit of a jacked elbow right now so have to uh, be careful, so I'm gonna go with the lightweight again. Now, this is a point that a lot of people, when they go into this, they throw the dumbbell over their shoulder and get ready to do it. There's a safe way to get in and out of this motion too. Basically what I do is I get my core stance like I was talking about before and I showed you in the cutaway. I bring it up to my chest here, the dumbbell flat. I get the grip that I want, then I push it up, then I put it over my head. I wonder if I'm getting my mic there. If I am, I'm sorry. And just like that. And my core is engaged. I'll bring it back down, same way. Boom. Now my core is engaged. The reason why I didn't go through the motions of that is just because I had my microphone there. But it's basically, without the dumbbell, it's a movement where your elbows are in and up like that. My core is engaged. No matter how much weight I have here, my core is engaged. And also my elbows are in, like I said before, we're all bicep and tricep movements. More importantly, you see I'm a little off balance, even with no weight, but my core and the way I have it engaged with the staggered stance help me and protect me from injury when I lose my balance, which won't happen too often, if never, hopefully never. I'm, I don't have good balance anyway, so. Okay, we're gonna go to shoulder presses. I'm gonna show you how to do those. And that's very important, engaging your core. You can actually feel it when you do the overhead press with the dumbbells. So I'm gonna show you how to safely get in and out of that as well. A lot of people, I'm gonna grab the light 15 pounds again. A lot of people when they do this exercise and try to do it, they always stand wrong. First of all, they don't engage their core, but also when they try to go into a shoulder press, whether they're seated or standing, it's very difficult for them to figure out a safe way to do that. Well, if you've ever done a bicep curl, you already know how to get into a standing shoulder press or even a seated shoulder press. You basically curl up and then you bring yourself up to there. And you can also create a compound movement, but now I'm safely in there. My core's engaged and I'm making sure I actually spread my legs out further if I have more weight to really give me almost uh, kind of like a half a little lunge without me lunging down like my feet and my legs are straight but they're spaced out like that and bring it down and up bring it down and up same thing now if I want to get out of this I'm not going to go and drop the dumbbells I'm going to turn them in put my elbows in like the top of a bicep curl 
and then bring it down safely and then bend my knees and put it down. So once again, to get into it, curl up and then turn into it. And you can actually make that an exercise, like I said before. Back down, bicep curl, bicep curl, up into a shoulder press and I'm engaging my core and I actually feel that in my stomach, in my abs, in my core as I'm pressing up. It's a very good movement to do standing up. So, and just from doing that, your legs will feel tired at first, your abs will feel tired, your, everything you're working will feel tired because you're engaging your entire body in this manner when you do this. So that's just a few, I'm gonna put this down, it's a little heavy right now. <laughs> that's just a few ways to engage your core. And if you apply this to even resistance training for anything you do uh, with push-ups, you just put yourself in a flat plank. We saw that before when I did the push-ups, pull-ups video. But when you're doing stuff like this with dumbbells, you can find ways to engage your core and you'll end up being stronger and even more fit and get a kind of an ab workout as you're doing it because core is essentially a part of your abs too. So you can essentially work your abs throughout a workout and you, I don't even like to use the word abs. Like I said, if you work your core throughout an entire workout, you will be lean, you will be fit, you will be strong. And uh, well, don't forget the diet though, Tim, right? I keep forgetting, no, you have to diet too, right? Yep. Okay, you can't just do this, you have to diet. So I can't control you when you go home unless you hire me 24 seven, but the rates are pretty expensive. So that's about it. If you have any questions, email us at t4show at gmail.com. Also follow me at Michael Manna on Twitter. But for now, for everybody here at the T4 Show and Snap Fitness, thank you and best of luck in all your core engaging endeavors.